Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about buy or sell fifth round of the current ADP. Now, what does this mean? It means pretty much I'm going to go over the whole fifth round based on average draft position and talk about whether I would buy or sell a player at the position they are going at inside of the fifth round, or pretty much what that means is will I buy or sell them, meaning will I draft them, or will I look elsewhere at that given pick inside of the fifth round? If you guys do end up enjoying this video at any point, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below because it's free and I put out content every single day to help you guys dominate your 2020 fantasy football leagues. While you're down there, check out the Patreon. It has all my rankings, all that stuff to help you guys dominate even further. So let's get into it. Buy or sell fifth round ADP for fantasy football in 2020. First, we are going to be reading off all the names on the list and then we are going to individually talk about each and every player going inside of the fifth round. So the fifth round begins with Devin Singletary running back of the Buffalo Bills, followed by Tyler Lockett, wide receiver of the Seattle Seahawks, then Dak Prescott, quarterback of the, uh, Phil- not the fucking Philadelphia Eagles, I almost just said, of the Dallas Cowboys, then DK Metcalf of the Seattle Seahawks, uh, wide receiver, 505, Darren Waller, tight end of the Oakland Raiders, who are now the LA Raiders, or the Las Vegas Raiders, I should say, Kyler Murray, quarterback of the Arizona Cardinals, 507, DJ Chark, wide receiver of the Jacksonville Jaguars, 508, Miami Dolphins, wide receiver, Devontae Paca, 509, Houston Texans, quarterback Deshaun Watson 5'10 uh Ty T.Y. Uh, Hilton, I should say, wide receiver of the Indianapolis Colts, 5'11". We got Russell Wilson, quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks, and 5'12". Stephon Diggs, former wide receiver of the Minnesota Vikings, now wide receiver of the Buffalo Bills. So at the beginning of the fifth round starts with a Buffalo Bill, and it ends with a Buffalo Bill at the 5'12". So first we're going to look at running back Devin Singletary of the Buffalo Bills. Now Devin Singletary, to me, is a great talent. I saw the guy perform very well last season, but... You got to base a lot of fantasy, not off of how good the player is. It's more based on the opportunity that they're going to be given in the given year you are looking at. And in 2020, I don't think Devin Singletary is going to be given enough opportunity to be worthy of making my first round slide or my first pick of the fifth round, Devin Singletary. So he's going to be a sell for me. Reports out of camp that Zach Moss, rookie running back, is absolutely tearing it up he's being very proficient in pass blocking catching balls out of the backfield as well as being a very good in between the tackles runner to me, with Zach Moss in this situation, I don't think Devin Singletary is going to get enough touches to guarantee him to be worthy of this fifth round pick. I really think that it is going to be a 55 to 45 percent split in Devin Singletary's favor. And Zach Moss is one of those big motherfuckers who's going to be able to barrel into the end zone. So I just think Devin Singletary is going to get vultured a bunch of times and won't be getting enough touches to warrant being drafted inside of the fifth round. So for me, Devin Singletary is definitely a hold and not even a hold. He's just a hard fucking sell. I don't want anything to do with Devin Singletary inside of the fifth round. I typically don't draft him on my team, regardless of where he gets drafted. And I've seen in a bunch of leagues, he actually goes inside of the fourth round. At the 502, we have Tyler Lockett of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, if you want a safe wide receiver in the fifth round, you found it right here. It is Tyler Lockett of the Seattle Seahawks. Sure, he's not a guy with tremendous upside because they are a run-heavy team, but when Russell Wilson airs the ball out, you know that shit is going to be completely accurate. And Tyler Lockett has been a beast year in and and you're out with Russell Wilson. He did kind of struggle last season due to the fact that he was hurt. But that does not mean that I hate him for 2020. I think he's going to be a very safe player yet again in 2020. And a guy that I will definitely rely on drafting inside of the fifth round. If I want more of a safer kind of pick here. Now at the 503, we have the first quarterback of this video. Quarterback Dakota Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys. Now Dak Prescott is one of those guys that either you hate him or you fucking love him. No one's really indifferent on Dak Prescott. A lot of people hate the Cowboys, so they hate Dak Prescott. A lot of people think that Dak Prescott is talented like me and they like him or they're just a Cowboys fan who really likes him so personally my read on Dak Prescott is that I really like him this offense is star studded they have Michael Gallup great wide receiver they have Amari Cooper who, while I don't like him for fantasy football is a great wide receiver and they have first round draft pick CD fucking lamb at the wide receiver position and now they bring in Mike McCarthy to be their head coach Mike McCarthy is one of those coaches that loves to air the ball out now I understand that Kellen Moore is likely going to be calling the plays of the team the offensive coordinator so I'm not really too worried about them becoming super pass heavy but even if they do Dak Prescott thrives in that scenario so he's definitely a buy for me Dak Prescott is also one of those quarterbacks that can get it done with his legs he scores like five rushing touchdowns every single year I believe he scored five every single year he has been in the NFL so he's safe in that regard as well as on a offense that is really looking to pass the ball with three amazing weapons I would be very surprised if Dak Prescott did not finish inside of the top five at the quarterback position now do I like drafting a quarterback in the fifth round 
fuck no. But if you want Dak Prescott, I think he is the best quarterback available in the fifth round. So I would go ahead and take him here if I wanted a quarterback. Do I normally? No, I typically wait because I believe in like the fifth, the fourth, fifth, sixth round, this is where you're building the core of your team. You're snagging running backs, you're snagging wide receivers to be a part of your starting roster. And I just feel like you can wait on the quarterback position. But hey, Dak Prescott is going to be amazing, in my opinion, in 2020. So if you want him here at the 503, that's definitely a great price to pay for Dakota Prescott. At the 504, we have another Seattle Seahawks wide receiver in DK Metcalf. Now, DK Metcalf really came out of nowhere last season. He was a guy that a lot of people were looking at, but they were like, hey, his old missed tape doesn't show me that he's going to be able to do it in the pro level. DK Metcalf's probably going to be a pick that Pete Carroll ends up missing on. He's just not going to be all that good, but all that shit was completely false. DK Metcalf had an excellent rookie uh, season in Seattle. Now, there is obviously concerns that, oh, on run-heavy teams, they typically can't get two over 1,000-yard wide receivers. They almost fucking did that shit last year in Seattle. Like I said earlier with Tyler Lockett, even if the team is going to run the ball a lot, you can really rely on Russell Wilson to throw the ball up to get it to both of those guys. I think DK Metcalf, also a very safe pick inside of the fifth round. I think that definitely has very high touchdown potential since the guy is a fucking monster of a human. At the 505, we have tight end Darren Waller of the Las Vegas Raiders. And Darren Waller is a guy that absolutely flew onto the scene last season. He's a guy that I find that I like a decent amount this season, but I don't like him enough to draft him here in the fifth round. That's where he's going. So so if you want him, you're going to have to draft him at this spot where my opinion is on tight end is either you get one of the top three guys, which is Kelsey Kittle or um, Mark Andrews, or you just completely wait till later in the draft and snag one of those late round guys, which is typically my strategy. I'm not about drafting one of these middling round tight ends. I feel like Darren Waller could probably have a great season in Las Vegas again. I just worry that we saw Darren Waller kind of tip off once uh, Hunter Renfro was getting more involved and then Darren Waller was getting less involved. So I don't know if that's going to be true for all of 2020. There's a lot of wide receiver options over there in Las Vegas, so I'd much rather just stay away and draft the running back Josh Jacobs, who I talked about in an earlier video. If you guys want to check out more videos on the current ADP, I've done uh, rounds one all the way through four. Obviously, this is round number five. At the 506, we have Kyler Murray, who's probably actually five foot six. Kyler Murray, I don't even know how he sees above the goddamn line. He stands on one of those little things that little kids use to get up onto the sink so that they can brush their fucking teeth. That's what Kyler Murray stands on to see over the offensive line. But all jokes aside, Kyler Murray is a goddamn beast, so he's going to be a buy for me as well. Like I say, I typically avoid quarterbacks in the fifth round, but I will happily buy him at this price because I believe he's the fourth best quarterback for fantasy football, but him and actually Russell Wilson to me are very close. We're going to talk about Russell Wilson later on in the video. I think that Kyler Murray has a whole shit ton of rushing potential in Arizona. We didn't really see him use his legs until deeper into his first season in the NFL. I think he was afraid that he was going to get barreled over or something in the first couple of games, so he wasn't really running out of the pocket. And then deeper down in the season, he started to get more comfortable with himself, and he was running amok around there. Now, Kyler Murray plays with a team that doesn't have the greatest defense, which obviously bodes well for the quarterback position because he's going to be having to throw a lot in these games, which is very good for a fantasy football quarterback. Had an excellent rookie season in his NFL career, and I believe his second season in the NFL will be even better. So I like Kyler Murray here at the 506. If you guys have enjoyed this video thus far we are halfway through please make sure to click that subscribe button down below at the 507 we have my main man dj shark do 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 baby shark wide receiver of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, DJ Chark had an excellent sophomore season in the NFL and really started to play very good with both Gardner Minshew and 9-inch Nick Foles. But when Gardner Minshew was in there, he was looking like a goddamn baller. DJ Chark is obviously the head honcho wide receiver on the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's the alpha guy on the team, and I really believe he could have another great season. The same thing is the case with Kyler Murray, how you kind of talk about how a team's defense isn't very good, so they're going to have to be pa passing late in the game and that's going to be the same case with DJ Chark I believe in Gardner Minshew I think Gardner Minshew is a very talented player so I'm going to go ahead and believe in DJ Chark in the fifth round and believe in the fact that I think they are going to be very 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 pass heavy and having to air the ball out to DJ Chark late in the game 
Now on to the next wide receiver of the video, Mr. Devontae Parker at the 508. Devontae Parker's analysis is brought to you guys by my partners and my friends over at Manscaped.com. If you want to have the cleanest balls in your league, the nicest looking family goddamn jewels, make sure to check out Manscaped. They've got all types of stuff to make sure that your junk is looking A1. So make sure to check them out. My favorite thing you can get from them is the ball deodorant. That thing makes it smell A1 down there. So make sure you check that out. Use code Notorious at checkout for 20% off as well as free shipping. So the 508 Devontae Paca here. Now I am a fan of the Miami Dolphins. I got Dan Marino hanging up behind me, looking down at me at all times. I even say a nice prayer to him before I go to bed, but Devontae Parker is a sell for me. Now, why is this? His beginning schedule, he is fucked for his first couple of games. He is playing up against all of these amazing corners. Also, Preston Williams is coming back, and Preston Williams, when uh, the beginning of the season, when Preston Williams was healthy, Devontae Parker wasn't doing jack of all shit. He was looking atrocious. He only exploded deeper down in the season, eight games in, I should be, I should say, after Preston Williams ended up getting hurt. So now what happens with Devontae Parker playing these hard corners with Preston Williams being back? I don't think Devontae Parker is going to do very good. Now what happens if they switch to Tua halfway through the season? What happens then? Who is the uh, mainstay wide receiver one for the team? Is it Williams? Is it Parker? Is it someone completely different? I really have no idea. So I'm going to go ahead and stay away from this situation with Devontae Paca at the 508. Now into the 509, we have another guy with the first initials of D-E, and that is Deshaun Watson of the Houston Texans. Now I think Deshaun Watson is an amazing player. And I would not be surprised if Deshaun Watson finished inside of the top four at the quarterback position or even finished the year as the number one guy due to the fact that he is going to have to be doing a lot for this Houston Texans team to win games. He's going to have to put the team on his goddamn back legitimately they don't have DeAndre Hopkins anymore so he's going to have to do it all himself and I think that Deshaun Watson could do that and I think Deshaun Watson could be good for fantasy but I'm basing this off of where I have the quarterbacks ranked and I have Russell Wilson ranked ahead of him so for me Deshaun Watson is going to be a sell here at the 509 I think Deshaun Watson could do it both with his legs and through the air and I think he will have a good season but I want to draft the guy that I have ranked higher in my rankings so I'd personally not pick Deshaun Watson there at the 509 now to on to the 5.10 T.Y. Hilton of the Indianapolis Colts. Now, T.Y. Hilton has had quite the fall from grace the last couple of seasons. T.Y. Hilton is one of the best wide receivers in the league when healthy. This guy was a boss for years with Andrew Luck as the quarterback, and he actually played pretty good with other guys when Andrew Luck was just fucking dead and then Andrew Luck obviously ended up retiring and T.Y. Hilton didn't really play all that much last season. Now that is because of injury. The last two years T.Y. Hilton has just been riddled with injuries and I'm one of those kind of fantasy football players that tries to just bode on the side of caution. I try to not make it feel like I'm going to be taking a huge risk in the fifth round of the draft. And if I'm going to take a risk, I want to take a guy that I believe has a whole bunch of upside. And I'm just not sure T.Y. Hilton is that guy this season. I really believe the Indianapolis Colts are going to be one of those teams that is super run heavy, really trying to jam the rock down their opponent's throat. They bring in Phillip Rivers. Phillip Rivers is a very safe quarterback if he plays correctly. Um, that's what Phillip Rivers really is. He's a guy that does have the arm to go deep down the field. I'm just questioning if T.Y. Hilton will be able to stay healthy for long enough for him to become the wide receiver one on the team and for him to be a safe week in and week out player. So to me, I'm going to go ahead and avoid Mr. T.Y. Hilton at the 5'10", but obviously if he is to stay healthy, this will look like the worst pick ever because he will probably potentially finish inside of the top 15 at the wide receiver position. Now onto the 5'11", we have Mr. Russell Wilson of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, even with them not being super pass-heavy, Russell Wilson still manages to be a great quarterback in fantasy football, just like Deshaun Watson, just like Kyler Murray. He can do it with his legs. Now, I understand he's he's fucking older, so he's not going to be taken off and running like 50 yards up the sideline like Lamar Jackson or something, but Russell Wilson is good both in the passing game as well as in the rushing game, and like I said, even with little passes, Russell Wilson is able to do a lot with them. Russell Wilson is one of the most accurate quarterbacks in in the NFL. He's a guy that is not going to be throwing a bunch of interceptions, which is obviously going to help out your fantasy team a bunch. 
and he has the wide receiver core around him to succeed. So Russell Wilson, to me, is a buy at the 5'11". I do have him ranked ahead of Deshaun Watson, strictly because I feel a lot safer with Russell Wilson. I was a guy that was heavily out on Russell Wilson last season, and boy, did that bite me in the ass. He played up excellent in 2019. I believe he will be able to retain that king status in 2020 and finish as a top five quarterback. That's how I've got him in my rankings, but I wouldn't be surprised if he finished as like a top seven guy. But even then, I would happily have drafted him here at the 5'11", even though, like I've said a million times, I typically don't target a quarterback in this round. Final guy of the video, like I said, we start with a Buffalo Bill and we finish with a Buffalo Bill. So hopefully you guys are chugging some beers for the Buffalo football team. We're going to be jumping through some tables because Stefan Diggs is another guy that I personally don't have ranked as high as most. I think Stefan Diggs, to me, is more of a flex play or a wide receiver too. But with that said, Stefan Diggs does have that top 12 potential due to the fact that he is on a team that is going to throw the ball to him. Stefan Diggs is now the wide receiver one. There's no more Adam Thielen. Obviously, he gets shipped off to a team with a quarterback who's going to be throwing the ball to Stefan Diggs probably over his head a couple of times, but that's just how Josh Allen plays. If Josh Allen is able to connect to Stefan Diggs on a bunch of those long bombs, we know Stefan Diggs can run fast enough to go and get that ball, just like he did in the Minnesota Miracle when he, the fucking Saints guy missed him, and he walked in the end zone and threw his helmet off, walk-off, touchdown. That's what him and Josh Allen are going to be doing all season long. I believe that Stefan Diggs is very good. I think he's a very, very safe pick. I don't see immense upside with Stefan Diggs, unless Josh Allen is really keying in on Stefan Diggs. I think Josh Allen's a guy who um, kind of shreds the ball out to the whole offense, but that doesn't mean that Stefan Diggs can't be great, considering John Brown last year as the wide receiver one was fantastic for fantasy football, so I'll happily take Stefan Diggs here in the fifth round and be pretty happy about it, definitely thinking that if the Buffalo Bills offense looks as good as I think they possibly can with another year of Josh Allen having time to train and get better, I think Stefan Diggs could be a beast in 2020 fantasy football, so I'll buy him at the 5.12, so thank you guys all for watching this video. If at any point you ended up enjoying, you ended up having a nice laugh, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. I love each and every single one of you motherfuckers, so make sure you have a great rest of your day. Check out Manscaped if you want your balls to have a great rest of your guys' day, and check out the Patreon down below if you want to have a great draft day. I love you all, and I'll see you motherfuckers later with another heater of a video. Good boy!